Orange Fish River Tunnel. The Orange Fish Tunnel is of 82.8 kilometers, 51.4 miles long irrigation tunnel in central South Africa, built to divert water from the Orange River to the Fish River Valley. It is the longest continuous enclosed aqueduct in the Southern Hemisphere. Purpose For many years, large areas in the Eastern Cape experienced severe water shortages because of little rainfall in the arid Karo. The situation was aggravated by the reduction in capacity of many of the existing dams due to heavy silt deposits. The project to alleviate this situation comprised two interdependent engineering schemes, neither of which was any use without the other. First, a dam had to be built across the Orange River, and then a tunnel had to be driven to take the water across the watershed into another river system. The Orange Fish Tunnel, together with its network of tunnels, weirs and balancing dams, has enabled these areas to be restored and has made the irrigation of thousands of hectares of additional land possible. The main purpose of the tunnel is to divert water from the Garip Dam route. The tunnel diverts water from the Orange River to the Great Fish River and the semi-arid areas of Eastern Cape Province. The Orange River is the largest river in South Africa by volume and the longest. It rises in the Drakesburg Mountains of Lesotho and flows westwards through increasingly drier country. The inlet tower at Thurtite 4126 as 25 dig 4546 e takes water from the Garik Dam at Ovistan. The name Ovistan is an acronym based on the Afrikaans Orange VI Srivir 2 and Nel. After traversing due south under the suburb mountain plateau, it releases the water to the Tebas Sprout Tunnel outlet at 31 dig 2522.5, S25 dig 3814E to the Groot Brack River, and onwards to the valleys of the Great Fish River and the Sundays River. The tunnel is on what is called a self cleansing gradient of 2% from north to south. During construction, South Africa changed over from imperial measurement to the metric system but special dispensation was made for this project to use imperial measure throughout, which was half-built at the time. Construction Construction started in 1966. Preliminary works included a tarred road running parallel to the route of the tunnel and three towns, Oviston at the north end, one in the one middle called Midshaft and Tebis at the south end. These towns included such facilities as a clubhouse, tennis courts, a community hall, primary school, clinic, etc. At Ovistan, there was also a power station to provide electricity to the tunnels and to the towns. Other facilities included contractors' yards, a testing laboratory, and offices for the staff. The tunnel is 19 minutes 6 in finished diameter, with a 9-thick mass concrete lining. The ground was excavated entirely by the drill and blast technique, and was tested both by flood and by fire. The lining was done using a traveling shutter concrete arrived first thing Monday morning, and continued unstopped until Saturday afternoon. The concrete mix was specially developed for the project, and the cement content was 50% slagment a.k.a. PFA pulverized fuel ash. The mix contained retarders to enable the concrete to be placed up to six hours after mixing, and it also contained accelerators to enable the shutter to be moved after only 18 hours. The speed of the shutter was about 1,000 feet 300 m a week. The tunnel has a finished diameter of 5.35 meters 17.6 ft and ranges in depth between 80 meters 262 ft and 380 meters 1247 ft. It is on a gradient of 1 2,000. It was engineered by the British firm of consulting engineers, Sir William Halcrow and Partners, in association with Messrs. Keepstain and Partners of Johannesburg. The client was the South African Department of Water Affairs. Halcrow's senior partner, Sir Alan Muirwood, sometimes known as the father of modern tunneling, worked on many of the world's leading tunnel projects, including the Orange Fish Tunnel, the senior engineer in charge of the design and supervision was Barry Kidd, who died young before construction was complete. The tunnel was opened in 1975. 
When completed, the tunnel's length of 83 km 52 mile was the longest continuous enclosed aqueduct in the southern hemisphere and the second longest water supply tunnel in the world. Over 203 of concrete was used to line the tunnel, which has a maximum throughput of 54 and 3 slash s, about 2,000 cusacks. Intake at Ovistan The intake tower is situated on the south bank of the Garak Reservoir at Ovistan, approximately 19 km 12 mi upstream of the dam wall. Seen from above, the intake tower is shaped like a four-leaf clover with each leaf containing an inlet gate all at different levels. In this manner, water can be drawn from different levels to help control the water quality. Each of the four inlets can be sealed off to allow complete dewatering of the tunnel for routine maintenance. 